Welcome, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. Today I'm going to talk about really trading for a living, and how you can trade one strategy, which is the strategy that I trade, and trade in the morning, in a very quick time period of the day, in the first half hour of the day, and how you can make up to six figures a year doing that. If you'd like more information after the webinar, you can go to my website at www.thestockswish.com. And you can also email me at melissa.thestockswish.com at too, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, or Skype. So, the power of the gap. The gaps are what we're going to talk about today. And in the introduction, he mentioned that that's the only strategy that I trade. There are so many different strategies that you can do in the market, so many different ways to make money. I found that honing in on one thing is really the way to do it if you're going to do it for a living. Why? Because you need to be consistent. So a long time ago, I figured out that there was a lot of money and power in gaps for momentum and for the right and correct setups to get the right risk to reward. And one of the benefits, obviously, of trading, if you're a day trader, is that you can work from home and you can set your own hours. And particularly with the time of the day that gaps set up, it happens in the morning. Into the open of the stock market, I trade the U.S. stock market, I trade equities. I'm a day trader. And these setups happen between 9.30 and 10 a.m. So ask yourself if maybe you're here today because your goal is to make a living trading. And this is what we're going to talk about. Making a living trading means that you have to have consistent monetary results. If you're all over the place, and many of you, if you're here, if that's you, you have to kind of pull back and say, why is it that I'm not seeing the results that I want to see? Consistency counts if you are expecting to pay your bills with it. You have to act like it's a job, because it really is a job. I go in every day, I have goals for myself, I have expectations for myself, and I go in looking for a certain thing, and I say, if it does this, it does this, and I'm looking for the stocks to go to certain numbers or areas. And I'm also looking for the right pick. But I have expectations of myself to be consistent, because it's the only way you can rely on it as something for income. So finding success in the market really is about finding the right path. There are many, many different paths out there. Obviously, there's a lot of speakers here today. Something has to resonate with you for you to go down a certain path. And I believe that the people that find me, that come to me, that take my class, that learn my method, something that I said, maybe something that I'll say here today will resonate with you, you in particular, because you will be coming to me as a mentor, because I'm a trader myself, and I train each day in the market, and it's about really finding the right path. No one has the same path. We, none of us do, okay? And training is about getting on that right path for yourself where you find the consistency and you find the success. For me, I created a checklist. This is my method to success because it's a 26-point checklist that I use to determine what stock or gap I'm going to trade each day. I take it very seriously. It's just like you, if you were an airline pilot or a doctor before you perform surgery. Uh, people that are professionals have checklists. They go off, they check it, check it, check it. Do we have all the information? Do we have all the pieces of the puzzle? Do we have everything we need for the surgery? And professionals do this. And as a trader, I created this idea for myself because it helps me stay focused. And if I'm staying focused, then I'm focused on the goals and I'm not all over the place. This is important in trading. Why? Because when you trade, you risk money. And any time that money comes into something, okay, this is trading, this is your job, this is family things that come up, personal relationships, things with your spouse. I mean, when money comes into the picture, it can be a whole different ballgame. So there's no way you get around that with trading. So we have to focus ourselves so that we're not thinking about the money as much, so that we can actually make money. It sounds like it's an oxymoron, but the fact is that if you were too focused on the money when you're trading, then you're not going to see the right results. You have to focus on a specific thing that you're doing to get you where you need to be to make the money. So a checklist is a business plan. It's a business plan for you as a trader. Call it a trading plan, call it whatever you want. For me, it's one specific method or checklist that I focus on. I I thought about this just recently, actually. I was talking about this in my training room, and I was trying to explain this to everyone. What do you need to be a, a success? I call this a trader success wheel. Here we have the wheel, okay? This S stands for the strategy. If you want to be successful, you have to have a good strategy as a trader. I don't care if you're a day trader or a swing trader. I don't care what type of trader you are. 
this is the biggest piece of the wheel here. Okay, this is like more than 50%. I'd say this is like 60, 65% that you need to have a strategy. When I talk to many people, they say to them, what is a strategy? Or I call, people call me about the class. What they are usually describing to me is actually not a strategy, but this over here, which is an entry. This is the next big piece that you need. Smaller than this, it's how are you entering the stock. Okay, this is the entry that you're getting in where you're entering it, and whether you're going long or short. Many people describe this as a strategy, but it's not. A strategy is something separate. You need this. This is actually the top thing. And for me, it is called the golden gap. It's the 26-point checklist, which is my strategy where I'm trading. Then I have a system and a method that I teach in the class and I do every day to take the entries, which we'll talk about, and I'll show you some examples. This you need. You will not be successful without a good strategy. You just won't. Why? Because it's more than half the piece of the puzzle. It's like more than 50%. Like you have to have it, okay? Now, that's not to say if you're good at entries that you can't make money some of the time. Some of the trades will be good. Some of the trades will lose. But in the end, you will not be able to make a living just doing entries. You've got to have this. And you have to have this. And you have to have this. Now, what is this? The M. M stands for money management slash exit because you're not actually up and booked money in the trade till you take it out. It's never over to the fat lady sings. So it's money management. This is like 15% of the wheel here. So if you have a great strategy and a really good exit in, uh, entry in something, even if you screw up the exit, sometimes you can make money. Most of the people, though, that have a good strategy and a good entry and good money management will make it. The problem is that many people don't have all these three things. So with a good strategy and a good entry and good money management, you can be a successful trader. It's not impossible. I'm doing it and I'm teaching people to do it. People don't have a good strategy, though. And many people don't know how to enter trades properly. People that do, that are still failing, have poor money management. What is this about? This is about discipline. You can call it whatever you want. I found, though, that what this really has to do with usually has nothing to do with trading. Many people that fail, that have these two pieces here, which is a huge, this is 85% in which you need to make it, have other things going on in themselves, in their brain, in their life, in their emotions that affect them just you're preventing themselves from being successful, okay? And then you've got to seek help or expertise from other people, not people with anything to do with trading, okay? Because money management should be simple. If you have a proper strategy, you get in the trade and you're up. And then you're up. I mean, you get in the trade, you have a good strategy, you have the right pick, you get the entry, you're up in it. The money management, should you should know what you're doing, make a decision, and you should be profitable, okay? But this is important because... This is how what's going to determine how much you make. Meaning, let's say you get out too early, but the trade goes on to work and goes to a fabulous target, and you only make a little. And the next day, the next trade doesn't work. Then you lose, and you're like only up a little bit then. Or maybe you're even break even. But the one person that had really good money management that knew what they were doing, had conviction in the strategy, had conviction in the gap, knew that the target was X, Y, Z and stayed with the trade or got out of a piece of the trade into one spot and held the rest of the target and that person has a really big day. And then with one loss the next day, that person is still up really good money for the week. So even though this is only like 15% here, it actually is really, really important because it makes a difference between whether you make a little or a lot. There's very, very few people that don't do this well and have all of this, uh, but there are still, okay? There are still, why? Because some people have some things in their head, all right? But the point I'm trying to make is if you have a good strategy and a good entry system, you can learn this. You can work through it. You can get to the point that you will make more. By over time, being profitable, even if it's a small amount, you can get to the point where you're risking more holding in the trades to take bigger profits, to make the money that you want to make to earn a living doing this, if, in fact, that's what you want to do. But this is the wheel here. I mean, this is what it is. And many, many people don't even know what a strategy is, and I find that, I just find that unbelievable, actually, but, you know, you got to have this. Like, you can't, you will not be successful without this. You won't. You won't make it. And I, I think uh, more people don't have this than, than I ever thought, actually. So the strategy that I do is called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate each gap to trade each morning using the checklist. The strategy each day to look for is in Golden Gaps. Now, 
Why train gaps? But why? What's the purpose? Why am I doing this? Why do they work as a strategy? Because they pay well. Okay, now why? Why do they pay well? Because gaps are created with large institutional money, like hedge funds, banks, trading desks. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it because they're the ones that are going to make the stock move in the day. And by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is behind it, is on your side, and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. What should we do? Do we buy it here? Do we sell it here? There's a sense of urgency for people that are in the stock already, whether long or short. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power. And power money is actually what moves the market. That's what moves the market. It will always move the market. It is always going to move the market. We could not make money as individuals without that type of money, so you need to be able to read it. Uh, you, you have to be able to read it. And the highest, highest, most advanced level that you could possibly read institutional money in the market, in ETFs, in the QQQs, in the SPY, in stocks, in anything that trades is gaps. That's how powerful gaps are. I don't, I don't care what it is because they're made by institutions. So the checklist tells you which direction to take the entry in the gap. So you have the checklist of strategy, you find the right pick, and then it tells you what direction to take it for the entry, whether long or short. Now here's a clip here of Nike. Nike gapped up. This was last week. Now, here's what a gap is for people that don't know what a gap is. This stock closed in here the night before at approximately 79 something, okay? The next day, it opened up here at 88 something. The stock gapped up almost $10 overnight, so it gapped up. From the close in here to the open of the next day, the market, stock market closes at 4 o'clock Eastern Time and opens at 9.30 Eastern Time. From 4 o'clock here, we closed. And then we gapped up here at 9.30 the next day. This is a gap. So you could see this gap, and many people don't know what to do with this. They say, is it going to fade? Is it going to fill the gap? Is, should we short it? Should we buy it? This was a buy. This was a long. Nike was a long. Nike is still a long, OK? So I have a way to look at this and say, yes, I raped it using the checklist, and I see that it is a good bullish gap. Therefore, you would look for an entry to buy this. Again, you need the strategy, and then you need the entry. The entry is you're taking it at a certain placement, and you're looking to go long. You're looking to buy it. And then you have to money manage on the day. Uh, target, you look for all of these things. And again, I teach this in the class. But this is what a gap is. So first, you find the gap. Rate it using the 26-point checklist. There are many things that gap. Almost every stock gaps every single day, and the market gaps every day, actually, too. So there's plenty of things to pick from. Now, do they all meet the qualification of the rating system? No. That's why you need a way to pinpoint and hone them down. Otherwise, you're looking at too many things in the day. You don't get the right entry, which you need. Why? Because the setups happen early, in the first half hour of the day. So if you're waiting till 10 o'clock to see everything on the scanner, you might miss 80% of the move. So the philosophy behind the 26 points is to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Most of them trade out the entire day in that one direction, even though the big moves happen in the morning, which is really all I care about. You're looking for big moves on the day, and you're looking for early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. You're also looking for precise entries with follow-through and a good risk reward. A good risk reward is what? One to three. One to three, one to two, one to two and a half, one to four, one to five. If I'm taking a trade, I don't want to risk one and make a half lot. If I don't want to risk one and make one, I don't want to risk one and make one and a half, I won't even do it then. I'll probably pass. If I think a stock's too big, I may not take the trade. But it depends really on the price point of the stock or where the target is for the day. So I'm looking for a good risk to reward, which means for every dollar that I risk in a trade, I'm looking for an expectation of $3. Now, does everyone get to $3? No. No, of course it doesn't. Some go to six, some go to two. You never know. Okay? Some trades don't work. And actually, we're going to talk about a trade that didn't work in here. Now, specific time of day for setups actually is very important. And this is what helps you get in these moves aggressively because you're getting in before the institution really grabs hold of the stock on the day and moves it. So you're getting paid on that institution coming in. So you're taking it. I'm predicting 
that the institution is going to buy it or sell it based on my rating system, which I do pre-market before 930. I haven't picked before 930. Today I did GPS. It was a short work. I knew I was doing that when I rolled out of bed. Okay, I rated it, everything. So I am looking for what I'm doing to take it before the institution makes a move. Okay? I'm predicting that the institution is going to do it, and I'm taking it then on the setup. Now, I'm going to talk about a day that just happened this week, just because it's this week. I'm going to talk about October 7th, two days ago. And earnings season, it's earnings season is now, so there's like a bazillion gaps every day. But two days ago, there was a ton of things that had a beautiful, beautiful uh, setups in it. That if you played every one, I want to show you here how you know you how you can do these things, find them, and focus on them to really make make money. To make money not just on the day, but on the week or the month for yourself. You know, when you're a, a trader. It's not like you go into the office every day and you go there and you work from 8 to 5 and you get paid a certain amount of money as a salary. And actually, if you're tired one day and you really uh, don't get a lot done, you still get paid if you show up and you do your thing. But, you know, ultimately trading isn't like that. You don't have to be good every day that you trade. The good thing is that some days you get a lot and some days you may not have anything to do. But you have to show up every day and you've got to be on point and you've got to be looking every day for the good ones. And you have to make the money when it's there. And the seventh was one of those days where there was opportunity all over the place. And right now in earnings season, the fall earnings season, there's opportunity all over the place to play these things. So you have to take advantage of it when the money is there, okay? It's just not like a regular job. You're looking for opportunity. What is your job as a trader, number one, to find the opportunity. Spot the opportunity. Play when it happens and play it fearlessly. And do not train when there's no opportunity. That's your job as a trader. If you are a trader, that, that's your job, like me. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, TCS. So you would rate the gap, and then you would watch the gap, and you have to determine what you're doing with this buying it or shorting it. So you would look to short this here, and here's the move. The stock ended up continuing for a bigger move here past the first half an hour, but if you just did the morning move, the stock actually moved more than a buck. Risk was 20 cents. You have a predetermined amount of money you're risking each trade. It should be similar. Therefore, your share size will be different depending on the stock. I use hard stops, okay? This is just one quick trade. Happened immediately. I'll go back and show you. If you took 3,000 shares of this, you made 3,300 bucks. This is not even holding the train to a dream target, which, by the way, it went to on the day, but you had to be in it for a couple hours. We're just talking about morning trading here now. Risk to reward is 5.5. It's a very solid trade. You made $3,300 risking 600 bucks in five minutes. You had to take the size. You had to take the risk. What if you didn't want to take 3,000 shares? What if you only went to take a thousand shares? You would have made twelve hundred bucks. Okay. Either way, it was a nice trade. A thousand shares. How much would you risk if the stock's twenty cents? A thousand shares is what? Two hundred dollars. You're risking. Okay. Have to be able to figure the stuff out in your head or have a little calculator next to you. Anyways, here it is. Boom. That's it. Took it. You're out. That's all you played. Just one little move in here. How did you know to get this? How did you know to watch this? How did you know? Because of the strategy. How does something like this move like that? Because of the strategy, okay? The rating system, everything it tells you what to watch. Now, as it turns out, like I said, this went farther. But $3,300 in a day, if you get out, you get on that first morning move, that quick, quick move that happens in the first half an hour, that's, that's money. That could be your week, actually. You, would, you could take the week off. That's money for whether it's in one day or a week to make a living. Okay. Now, as it turns out, I called the market short on this day, on the 7th. If you knew how to read the market gap, which I know how to read market gaps, then you would know the market was a short on uh, the 7th. You would have had to know that in the morning, though, reading the gap, because the market broke late, late in the afternoon on the 7th. But if you knew how to read gaps in the morning pre-market, you would have known the market was going to break on the day. You didn't know what time, but you knew it was going to break based on the gap. And you could have followed this through actually all day. It dropped another dollar. If you had a 3,000 share size and you could out of any, which you probably would have because that was really a nice move in there. But let's just say you held it all day, had conviction the market was a short on the day and held it down, you would have made over $6,000, almost $7,000 because it dropped another buck from 1790. It actually went to 16 something. It went it went to some crazy number. It just went to some crazy 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 number actually. Okay? Actually, would have made more than that. But 
you would have had to know that the market was a short on the day, okay, to do that. I typically trade in the morning now, but I'm just showing you ideas. I like to get out of my trains in the morning, but I'm showing you ideas here. If you really had the time or felt like holding something all day, there's stuff that does move all day. I can have bigger moves in the afternoon, but my suggestion is you need to know how to read the market to do that. I can do that again. You could rate the market gap to know. Me, personally, I like to quick money in the morning. This is what me, personally, what I do. Now let's go over the next one. This is another nice one here on the 7th as well. Cree, okay? Cree is on its way to $30, uh, still even now today. But Cree had a quick setup here in the morning and dropped, okay? Nice quick setup in Cree. Again, you'd be looking to do what is short in this. Price of the entry is $33.18. Risk is almost the same as the other one, $0.18. Cents. Same amount of money, though, that you're risking, 600 bucks on 4,000 shares. This didn't have as big of a move, but still, precise entry, got the good pick, had the right direction, know how to short it, strategy behind you, profit, 2,400. Again, out, 10 minutes. This one followed down two. Could have continued this one down two. Another one that's a swing trade, a core trade. We're going to talk about that more later, but again, I like to do the morning. That's my thing. I always say, you know, in the morning, I'm alert. I have my coffee. I have, all my brain is thinking I'm not tired. I'm well rested. I like to put money really early. I don't want to sit and trade for eight hours every day. My brain gets tired. My reflexes get tired. I can be perfect for 30 minutes. I can be perfect for 60 minutes. You know, as the day goes on, things wiggle and jiggle. So again, I like the morning, but this screen is lower too. All right. So this is just this. Boop. Okay. But this one did continue then on the day as well. So you could have held this one too. But we're just talking about the morning here. All right. Next one here didn't work. Didn't work. You have to account for what? Sometimes some trades do not work. Easy PW gap down. What happened? Rally came in, set up, dropped. You were up a little teeny weeny bit in here. Got stopped out. Okay. Again, you have a set risk that you're taking. Price of the entry was 880. Risk was 25 cents. And 2,500 shares, you risk 625. Exit is at the stop. You got stopped out. Stop was 905. You're out. No profit. A loss. Loss is 625. That's what it is. Okay. You have to accept that some days things won't work and you take a loss. The good thing about trading gaps as well, besides making money quickly, is guess what? When something doesn't work, it doesn't work quickly too. So you're not sweating a bullet, waiting for something in a trade that's down for, you know, hours. It either works or it doesn't. I mean, you know, like right away, basically. So that's another positive thing, too. You're not going to waste your time waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, waiting for this thing. It's set up. It should have worked. It didn't. Okay? That's it. You're off of it. You know? Just move on. And there are other things to do that day. You look for other gaps that rate. Now, what if you don't have anything else to do in the day? What if this was it? That's it. Then you take the locks. You get up the next day. You look for gaps the following day. All right? That's not the case now, though, because it's earnings season. There's tons of things to do. But what if you didn't? What if you only had this guy? Then you just stop. Again, this is part of the M of that 15% of the trader success wheel, money management. Now, you could do another gap, though, if there were other gaps that rated per the system. But I'm saying if there weren't, you would have to stop on that day if there wasn't any other opportunity. You're not going to all of a sudden do all kinds of other crazy things, okay? Again, the focus on what? The strategy. The strategy that tells you what to do. Now, there was another nice one here, soda. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Soda continued down as a swing trade, went to the target of $20 or thereabouts just yesterday, I think. Soda was a nice short. You're looking to short soda. Again, setups happen very quickly. And this is just in the first little drop that happens in here in the morning. This didn't have a big move in it on the day as expected. It was a better swing trade. It's still lower. But guess what? You made money. You risked. 50 cents. Bigger stop in this. So price of the entry is 22.18. Exit into the first morning drop in the half an hour. You have things to do. You don't want to trade all day. Goes down 21.70. You with $600. Unfortunately, you didn't get 20 bucks or 21 even on that morning here for you. You've got to have things to do. You make 5.76. You basically make one hour a little bit less. And it's still money, okay? Again, money management, you have an expectation that in a certain period, it didn't break. 
if you have time, you can stay in the trade all day. This continues. It actually went to 2130-ish on the day. Broke really, really late in the day with the market. If you don't have time to do that, you trade in the morning, you do your thing. By 10, 10 15, you're looking to get all your things, and whatever you're up, you're up. Okay? And you take it. It's still money. Money. And the expectation was obviously to make more than one, but sometimes things don't go back in the morning. Rare, but you have to account for that sometimes. This is all So having the checklist helps you get back to the bank results each day, whether it's whatever, the time of the day helps that. You're monitoring the time of the day. That's going to help you tell you what to do as the numbers. You know and you see where it's setting up, and where it's setting up helps you see where to get. Like with the GPS today, I said in this morning, I said in the trading room in the morning when I rated the GPS, and I looked to short that, I said, if this sets up and breaks 37 in the first hour of the day, this is continue down and go. If it rallies up higher and hits this number here, it's going to break late. This is the target. So I know exactly all those things I'm looking for. And I have everything figured out like way before 9 So if it does what I want it to do, then I hit it. Then I just hit it like that, okay? And if it doesn't, then wait. Or I don't do it or I do something else. Now here's the AG. Oh, a nice gap. Stock closed the night before here up here at 47.12. Gap down the next day here around 4.30 something. Open, rally, dropped, rally. Nice setup in here. Where? 9.40, dropped into clock. Again, 20 minutes in the trade. This one continued as well, but again, morning move. You're in it, you're out, boom. Price of the entry here was 44.31. Risk is 16 cents. This is really actually very good for the prices. On 4,000 shares, Risk is thereabouts $640. Again, this is an advanced risk. Get up. Divide it by two, three, four, whatever you can afford with the BP and your cash account size. Exits $43.65. Not half bad here for a morning move with the stop. The stop is what made this so good. Total profits $26.40. It's a four-hour trade. Why? Because of the stock. This did end up continuing down, though, if you stayed in this all day. And you could have made 26.40 in 20 minutes. This is really, really good, okay? This is amazing, all right? This is a really, really uh, nice profit. You did not have to hold it all day. And you didn't have to stay in it longer than a half an hour. And you just didn't have to be in it that long. And, and, and it's, you know, if you equate what you're making per minute, making $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 in half an hour, you know, that is, it's outstanding. That's one of the reasons why trading is so exciting and so fun uh, because of the amount of money. That, but for me personally, my personality is that I like to trade in the morning because that's when this kind of setups happen. This is when the momentum comes in. I feel like I'm less at risk. Why? Because I'm on the trades that long. The longer you're in the trade, the more you're at risk in the market. Boom, that's it. You hold overnight, you're more at risk. Why? Because of gaps. Now, I do know how to read gaps, so I would know how to do swing and core trading. I do. I know how to do it. I'm not doing it now, though. Why? Because I like to be at the least amount of risk, and I'm relying on my day trading for income, so I feel like I have more control when I'm trading on the day and I'm putting in the stops. I feel like I'm more in control of what I'm doing, which, which I like because I, I want that consistency for myself. I want that reliability factor there for me. So how could you have made it? If you played every goal like this, is back on the seventh two days ago. TCS profit first drop all right around seventeen nine. You didn't stay in it when it went down to sixteen bucks. You didn't stay in it all day. First half an hour, you would have made your dollars. You had your risk and advance risk of six hundred. Pre profit twenty four hundred. Easy PW had a loss. Take that in consideration too. Soda profit five seventy six. AGCL. 2640, jump it if you traded every golden gap that day and took the loss on the one that didn't work, 8291. And guess what? Let's say you did two things or three things. You still had a great day even with the one not working. Okay? And this is how it all averages out. Let's say you have five days a week. Pretend this is all happening in the five days. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Pretend this wasn't all in one day. Do you see how it all works out? One doesn't work, you stop. Again, the M, the money management of it. You don't get crazy. You don't get nuts. You can't let yourself get out of control if something doesn't work. Sometimes things just don't work. Why didn't that work of the day? I have no idea. I don't even care. I don't even care, okay? You have to have a structure that you follow that works a high percentage of the time. 
You have to account for things that aren't going to work some days, and you can't let it bother you. That's also why, by the way, you can't actually risk more than you can afford. Because if you lose this on the day, and then you freeze like a jackrabbit and can't get up the next day and take this trade or this trade, you just want to give up and quit on life, then you're never going to make the money the market has that can offer you. Okay. So the benefit to golden gaps is that the setups happen and they go fast. They just they happen and they go really fast. It's, it's a huge benefit to trading gaps. The benefit also is you're at risk for less time, as I was discussing, because you're not in the trades that long. And I'm using hard stops, which means that the trade stops out and losing a set risk. Occasionally, you will have slippage if you're trading with size. You're really you're not going to have slippage if you only have a couple hundred shares. But if you have three, four thousand shares in something, sometimes you might have slippage, but it's a couple of pennies. It's not that much. Why? All these stocks have volume. Okay. You trade stocks that have volume that accounts for that, and you got to know where to put the stop. Again, I teach this. You, you know, people don't want to use stops because they say, "Well, I, I don't believe in stops. I use stops. I will take something with eight thousand shares and put a stop. I'm not taking eight thousand shares and something without a stop." Okay. You have to learn where to put the stop. That is control. Then I have the control. Then, then I know I'm not going to lose less than a certain amount or more than a certain amount. Okay. Now, as I was saying, the benefits that you can swing a day trade, I did not create my system to determine gaps for swinger core trades. I've been trading for six years, and I've been tracking it. And someday I'll end up doing this. The risk is different, okay? You can't take 4,000 shares unless you can afford to do this and take the loss if something gaps against you. But you could probably take 400 shares of something like this and follow it through. But you have to really know where something is going to fail or where it's going for the target. You have to watch this and monitor this every day. And I suggest to people, if you're going to do overnights and you're going to day trade, then you have two separate accounts. Because otherwise you get in the morning, then you're worried about your overnight, and then you don't pay attention to the morning, which you have to do for the day trades. Anyways, this is CLF. This thing is basically going to zero. Uh, really, really nice move in this. And, you know, you could have shorted the gap here that happened here, and you could have been in this as swing trade. Target was 10. Target was 10. It got there. It, you never look back. If you shorted this here for swing trade, got right to the target, you're headed to the dream target now. So, again, this is not the reason that I created the system. I don't do this. But it's a benefit. And for people that think about doing swing trading or long-term trading, if you can't be in front of a computer in the morning between 9.30 and 10, you can use my system to do longer-term trades. You're still going to read the gap. You're still going to take the entry but you're going to have different risk parameters for the money management, okay? And you're looking for bigger targets, actually. You're still going to look for three risk units as a target, though. You're just going to have bigger targets, and you're going to let them play out. And people always ask me about the options, too. You can provide this and use this for the options as far as determining the rating system for the pick and the direction, but you have to know how to do an option because I don't teach people how to do options. And some will make sense and some will not based on the stock. Okay, but again, you're looking at directional bias in the 26-point rating system, and then you got to take it in the right direction. The other benefit of day trading for a living is that it's personal freedom. You work a half day in the morning. Every once in a blue moon, you have something where you have the market power trending with you on a long or short. You can stay with it and work into the afternoon. But honestly, you're you're done really very early every single morning. Okay, I. Uh, just don't like to trade in the afternoon typically. I like to do other things. I think things wiggle and jiggle with the market as the day goes on. So again, unless you have the market with you, it's tough to stay in things through the close. And you're more at risk the longer that you're in trades. And I think it's very important if you're trading to book money. There's nothing like profits to give you confidence. There's nothing like profits, profits to give you conviction in what you're doing. And whether they're small, medium, or large, it helps you stay on track to do the right things and not be swayed by uh, doing nutsy stuff like taking too many trades in a day and having too many down days and running all over the place doing crazy things that you shouldn't be doing. You need to be focused and disciplined. The other benefit is financial freedom, which is that you work for yourself. If you work for yourself, you set your money off, you take it off, you want to take a week off of vacation, you don't want to train one day, you're too tired, you want to go out late one night. You can do one, okay? Working for yourself is nothing better. I will work for myself for the rest of my life. I, don't know. So I think you've got to get to the point where you have to decide if this is really something you want to do. But stress in corporate America, uh, there's stress in the corporate environment no matter where you live. And it really can take a toll. It can drag you down. It can take a toll on you in your life, and you've got to figure out, gosh, how can I figure something else out? You have more time for yourself.
and your family and having a happy life if you are for yourself. The other benefit is risk to reward, as I discussed. You're looking for more than one to one, one to two to three to four. You're looking for good risk to reward every day when you take the gap. And I want to point out here that you can use the system for the bullish gaps too. I used all short today, but Nike was a nice long that I called in here too. This was last week. Nike's definitely higher. You can just flip the points for the bullish ones. So you got to look at the bigger picture. If you invest your time in learning a strategy that works, imagine how that can change your life. You would only work for a few hours a day. You would work from home. You have worked out on your family, and you not have corporate stress. Like I said. So ultimately, you have to look at the investment on a train, investing meaning take a class like mine, opening up a great account, that is investment of your time and money. But the future holds a lot of potential for you to make more money over time this more. And you have to learn the strategy before you risk more. But like I said, you could have just risked 100 of those trades and still been profitable. And once you learn the rating system, the strategy, and how to trade gaps, just guys, let it really go work for someone like on a trading desk if you knew how to read things like this. Ultimately, the trainers who are on the right path, as time goes on, will get better. They will get better. Most people are like this. They start out with high expectations. They really want to do it. They have a full of confidence in the market themselves, everything. That's what the C stands for, confidence and also commit. But then they start to lose. Then they make a little. Then they lose more. Then they make a little back. But they're on a spiral space down. Where you want to be is over here. Very few people actually are over here to the right, but really what it's supposed to be. I mean, like this makes sense. This does not make sense. However, this is how most traders live and breathe. This though, because this will make sense in anything else that you did. If you went to school to learn something, if you went to school for another profession, if you worked it on for 25 years, you'd be an expert. Over time, you'd get better. Over time, you get raises. Over time, you get bigger bonuses. Over time, more. This is where you need to be. So, this is the goal. Okay, my training is better than it was a year ago. My training is better now than it was six months ago. My training is better now than it was six years ago. I'm over here. If you can turn it around, you can always turn it around. But I found that for some reason they stuck over here in this point because their confidence is down and their conviction is down. Why? Because of the trailing money. If they've been losing the market or spending money in classes and they haven't figured out a way to make it. But know that you can. Okay. Everyone goes through this period where they have to make the transition. I didn't start making money right away to my trades. But I actually am a very confident person. And it was like bizarro where I couldn't figure this out. <laughs> so like I just wasn't going to accept that. And I kept trading, and I figured out the stuff that I know now that I teach people. And one of the reasons my class is good is because I figured it out for myself. I never, never figured this stuff out for anyone but me. And then my friends encouraged me to start a business, and now I teach a class and what I know. But it didn't make sense to me that I was over I'm like, this doesn't make sense, except for my confidence was never down. Okay? I owe it myself. And I think if you believe in yourself and you know that you're a successful person, you will find a way. You, I, mean, I say will resonate to you. You will find your way to a, a good strategy, a good program, a good mentor. You will find your way. Okay? But you have to be confident in what you're doing. And if you're doing something now that isn't working and you don't have confidence anymore, you have to take a step back. You're just going to keep losing and you figure out what's going on. Is there something lacking? Is it the money management? Is it the strategies? Is it the entry? What? And if you don't have a strategy, you're never going to make it. You just will never, never make it if you don't have a strategy because you have to have, it's like the be all end all. You can have great money management, be a disciplined person, and you'll lose if you don't have a good strategy. The golden gaps are sound methodology and strategy. It makes sense. It's common sense. It makes sense. Think about it. Use your brain. And it's about relying on yourself and no one else. If you really, really want to work for yourself, do it. You can do it in the market. It's about learning something that can consistently sustain you over time to continually make money, okay? If you want to have longevity, you need to produce consistent results. And the Golden Gap course I teach teaches you how to get consistent results in your trading. So ask yourself how badly do you want it? You can empower yourself today by learning a good method. Fall is a great time to trade. The Golden Gap course that I teach is system to use to trade. It teaches the 26 points, the entries, the exits. It teaches the targets, all of this that you need to know. The class is a two-day class, a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stock, national bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online. The class is this weekend. I know it's in two days, but again, if you want to sign up, it's Saturday and Sunday, October 11th and 12th from 9 a.m. to 5 
one p.m. Eastern time. It's online. Class of the class is twenty nine ninety nine. If you're interested, email me at Melissa at the stock switch up. Remember, your path to success is the Golden Gap class, and I also teach another class it's called Force. This is in late October. This is about longer term trends. This is really more for swinging, swinging overnight. It's October twenty eighth and 29th from twelve to four. Cost of this class is nine ninety nine. I allow free retakes from us. So you can do this class or the other one and retake another time for free in the future. And I'm doing a special for this month. It's fall. It's a combo special. If you want to do both classes, you can save almost $500. It's $4.99 for the Golden Gap class and the Trends class. The Golden Gap class is what you really need to day trade. That is what teaches you everything in there, the rating system, the entries, what you need to day trade. And if you want to sign up for this, you can email me at thestockswitch.com as well. Thank you, everyone. I don't know if anyone has any questions or anything at all. I feel like I was rushing there at the end, but <laughs> sometimes I get excited about talking about trading. If you have any questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And it was so good. I want to say one last thing. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone.